All, this is Dr. Mubeen Sayyid. Welcome to one more show. So the discussion today is about the study from Georgia State University, actually from Georgia State. And also, tomorrow is my birthday. And thank you to everyone who have been writing happy birthday here. Thank you very much. All right, so let's start with the discussion. The summary of the discussion. It's a preprint. It is from the Georgia State itself, and it is on their health department, plus Emory University's researchers. Five million people, adults, who had one COVID vaccine, either messenger RNA, that is Pfizer or BioNTech, sorry, Pfizer or Moderna, or adenovirus-based vaccines. What the researchers did was, they said, somebody who gets vaccinated today and if they get infected within 21 days, and if they get stroke, versus somebody who gets vaccinated today, does not have infection within 21 days, and the strokes incidence in them. That is compared amongst these vaccines. So the question will be, why did they do this? What they wanted to understand was that because we know that, at least for the adenovirus-based vaccines, we know that there is a causal relationship, even FDA has provided that warning on adenovirus-based vaccines. So because there is a tendency, there is a possibility for the clotting, does that mean that there is also a possibility for increased incidence of strokes? That is why they looked at the vaccine only and then vaccine with concurrent infection, making the risk even more. And they found out that Moderna and Pfizer vaccines did not increase the risk of um, strokes. However, adenovirus-based vaccine had 57% increased risk of stroke. In this study, they say, because it is a retrospective study, they are not able to actually look back and say the causation by the vaccine or not. They can only show association. So that is the basic study. Let's look at the data itself. Actually, it's very fascinating. So this is drbean.com. In the description of this video, there is a link to get access to drbean.com if you have not. Check it out. I think you would like it. The prices are very, very low and soon will be will moving towards the courses. This is the study factors associated with stroke after COVID-19 vaccination is statewide analysis. And this is, as I said before, it is a preprint. Look at the researchers, Fadi Nahab, Department of Neurology and Pediatrics, Emory University, then Rana Bayakali, I hope I'm pronouncing them correctly. Georgia Department of Public Health, Mary, Division of Infectious Diseases, Emory University, Manet Lemuel, Neurology, Laura, Neurology, Srikanth, Neurology, Mogis, Georgia Department of Public Health. So it is not by some fringe uh, researchers plus it is for a larger cohort. I have their PDF here as well that I have been reading and let's look at this with my drawings. So these are gifts for humanity and they are continuing. <laughs> this is my depiction of humanity. <laughs> and this is me presenting the gifts. Okay, so, or really Dr. Bean. So back here, MedRx, so it is a preprint. I'm, I want to read their conclusion first and then look at the data. Conclusion is concurrent COVID-19 infection. And their definition of concurrent is somebody who gets vaccine dose one, only one dose. They specifically wanted to stay within one dose time, did not consider the second dose. That means this study will not tell you much about the second dose. Within one dose, after one dose, within 21 days, that is before the people get next dose, 
if they also get infected, then what is a collective risk? And they found that with the adenovirus to be more. So here, concurrent COVID-19 infection had the strongest association with early ischemic and hemorrhagic stroke after first dose of COVID-19 vaccination. The adenovirus-based vaccine was associated with a higher risk of early post-vaccination ischemic stroke than BioNTech. So what was the study's design? It is a retrospective study. That means they looked at the data and looked backwards. It is a statewide systematic study. They had one dose of vaccine data starting from December 1, 2020 to this February 28, 2022. So large cohort, which is good, large size as well. One vaccine dose within 21 days. The people who developed infections within 21 days of getting one dose of the vaccine, the first dose of the vaccine, was 0.4%. And the people who had infection before the vaccine, they were called past infections and they were 9%. Total 5 million individuals. Their characteristics were median age was 51, IQR was 35 years to 64, 51% were whites, 55% were females. The data was collected from these, but before that, 54% of these individuals, these uh, vaccinees, had received Pfizer, 41% had received Moderna, and only 5% had received the adenovirus. But still, we are talking 5 million people. Now, the registries, they took three registries. One was for vaccine, one was for strokes, and one was for infections, including COVID. So there was Georgia Registry Immunization Transaction Service, or GRITS, that had the vaccination record. Then Georgia Coverdell Acute Stroke Registry, or GCASR, that was the strokes. And Georgia Strait Electronic Notifiable Disease reporting system or SENS that had all notifiable diseases, including COVID. And because all of these registries had a unique identifier per person, they were able to connect them and look at people's vaccination, their strokes, and their COVID infections. Outcome predictors, what were they trying to do? They were trying to figure out that once you are vaccinated, what are the various risk factors they, which may contribute towards strokes? Is this the vaccine itself? Is this vaccine and the age? Is this vaccine with some other comorbidities? Is this vaccine plus infection? And they didn't have a lot of comorbidity data. So what they had was age, race, gender, and COVID-19 infection. They did not have comorbidity data, and they say that in their weakness of this um, study, that we didn't have the comorbidity morbidity data that can also influence, of course, these outcomes. A subject with a confirmed COVID-19 infection during 21 days post-vaccination was considered as having concurrent infection. So I wanted to make sure that we can see that definition. Now, results. 21 days post-vaccination, incidence of ischemic stroke was, check this out, 8.14 for BioNTech, Pfizer, 11.14, this is per 100,000 for Moderna, so 11.14 per 100,000 stroke incidences after Moderna, and then adenovirus-based vaccine, 10.48 per 100,000 was the incidence. They are not saying here that the vaccine caused it, but this is what they observed. Now, I want to add one more data point from a different presentation. That was, remember the latest FDA presentation for strokes, the signal of strokes that FDA found and CDC did not find because their definitions were different. And then many presenters came in and said, no, they did not find any signal, which FDA and CDC said that as well. And I really find that disgusting. But anyways, in the FDA data, 
what they had found was a statistically significant stroke signal when the Pfizer vaccine was combined with high dose flu vaccine. Otherwise, Pfizer or Moderna vaccine, the incidence of strokes after the vaccination was very similar to the incidence of stroke without vaccination, meaning they did not increase any further risk. So if you take that data and say, all right, so Moderna and Pfizer without flu don't have any increased risk of strokes. And then if adenovirus based has the increased risk of stroke, then in my opinion, that becomes a causation, not just an association. But again, they said over here that we are not providing a causation because we didn't look at those cases. So here, this is important. After adjusting for age, race, gender, and COVID-19 infection status, there was 57% higher risk, odds ratio 1.57. And look at the confidence interval, 1.02 to 2.42. So not just 57% high risk, the range goes to 1.42 times or 142% higher risk, upper bound, for ischemic stroke within 21 days of vaccination associated with adenovirus-based vaccine compared to the BioNTech. What is the takeaway of this one statement? The takeaway is that adenovirus-based vaccine and then infection within 21 days is a really risky outcome. And the number is shown here, 57% higher risk of strokes. That means if somebody gets adenovirus-based vaccine, then at least for 21 days, protect yourself as much as you can from infection. Because they both, and uh, if people are now going to start screaming that somehow I'm calling infection bad. Yes, infection can increase the risk of diseases. And one on one end, if the vaccine has increased the risk and you add an infection on top of that as well, then that would cause increased risk. Now here, this is especially true for adenovirus-based vaccines. There was no difference seen in risk of stroke between mRNA and Pfizer-BioNTech. So mRNA 1273, that is Moderna. So no difference between Moderna and Pfizer. But remember in the FDA signal, Moderna didn't have increased risk, but Pfizer with higher dose of flu had increased risk. So that is another combination that has increased risk, which they just simply said, we don't see any problem. Or they said, we continue to, to investigate because the signal is not seen everywhere. And there may be more confounders. Those with concurrent COVID-19 infection had an increased risk of ischemic stroke. Look at the increased risk, eight. That odds ratio is eight times. And hemorrhagic stroke, 5.23 times. And so that will become seven times here. This will become 4.23 times. And look at the intervals. 4.18 to 15.31, that is the interval's upper bound. There was no statistical evidence for interaction between vaccine type and concurrent COVID infection. So they said we couldn't find the evidence of infection and vaccine interacting. And I think that is just simply they didn't look into those records deeply to figure out maybe there is something from the vaccine or not. However, in this study, they did refer back to FDA saying that FDA thinks that there is a causation of the thrombosis by adenovirus-based vaccine. So maybe there is some association for by this reason, but they said we didn't find it or we didn't explore it, not that they were looking for it and didn't find it. So then they say, FDA has reported that a causal relationship between adenovirus-based vaccine and thrombotic thrombocytopenic uh, syndrome is plausible. Updating the EUA with warning about rare clotting events after adenovirus-based vaccines. 
So they are kind of connecting the dots here by using Pfizer's statement. Finally, data was unavailable to determine if any of these early post-vaccination strokes were related to thrombotic thrombocytopenia. So they said we, we cannot connect that dot. We don't have the data for that. So it's not that they looked for it and they didn't find it. They just didn't have the data to be able to connect that. So that means at the end of the day, the study doesn't tell you why this happened. It just tells you with adenovirus-based vaccine and an infection within 21 days means there is a higher risk of strokes within 21 days. Now, this also doesn't mean that after 21 days, all is good. It's just that they did not look after 21 days. That would have been another study to say, all right, after 21 days, there if, if there is another dose as well for, uh, what is that, mRNA vaccines, adenovirus-based vaccine, maybe not the other dose, and then keep comparing them. So they didn't go there. They just kept all vaccines to the first dose because adenovirus-based vaccines were one dose as well. Then they say, although not all determinants of stroke, particularly comorbidities were considered, so they didn't have the comorbidities. Concurrent COVID-19 infection had the strongest association with early incidence of ischemic and hemorrhagic strokes after first dose of COVID-19 vaccine recipients compared with those without infection. So somebody just had the vaccine, their risk, and then vaccine plus after soon after the vaccine getting the infection, that is the increased risk. The adenovirus vaccine appears to be associated with higher risk of early post-vaccination ischemic stroke than BioNTech vaccine, further supporting the ACIP preferential recommendation for Moderna for mRNA vaccines over the adenovirus-based vaccines. So they say there is no difference between Pfizer and BioNTech, I, uh, Pfizer and Moderna. I mentioned that before. So what is my conclusion? What is my understanding from this? What is the takeaway for me? The takeaway, my takeaway was no adenovirus-based vaccine at all. But if one must have to have it, then for 21 days, one should be very, very careful not to have the infection as well. On the BioNTech side, Pfizer side, this is the FDA report. That is, don't mix it with the high-dose flu vaccine. Remember in the FDA debrief, which we listened part of that together, they said that they see the signal with the high-dose flu vaccine and they do not see the signal with the low-dose flu vaccine or the Pfizer vaccine by itself or the Moderna vaccine. However, they said the problem is that when somebody is coming in for vaccination, we can give them both together. Otherwise, they will not come in again for the second vaccination. So we're not going to say don't give these two vaccines. They didn't even say that, all right, don't give high-dose vaccines, uh, flu vaccine with the Pfizer. I think they should have at least said that much. Anyways, they didn't do it. So this is my takeaway since then. And now my takeaway became that infection plus adenovirus-based vaccine is not a good combination, at least within the first 21 days. Now, one more study, which is mentioned in this study, but it is from France. They say, in a self-controlled case series method, study of early cardiovascular events. So now we're moving from stroke to the cardiovascular event after vaccine in France. The incidence of myocardial infarction was increased during the second week after vaccination with a single dose of adenovirus-based vaccine. No association was seen with stroke. So France didn't see it with stroke, but saw cardiovascular. Here in Georgia, they saw that with the stroke and didn't see the cardiovascular. I, I don't know if they were looking for cardiovascular. They were just looking for strokes. Then they say in France, the adenovirus-based vaccine was limited to people aged 55 years or older, whereas no age limit was present in Georgia, which may have been may have accounted for differences in increased rates of ischemic stroke when compared to BioNTech. So this is the basic study. Let me just very quickly give you an idea of the paper itself. So this is the abstract. We saw the conclusion, and then they just discuss this a little more 
and then they have their tables with the status. So that is my takeaway. And they say that in, in this study, they say that these events are rare. However, with adenovirus-based vaccine, the risk is higher, 57% higher, and you saw the confidence interval was even higher. So with this, thank you very much for listening in, for tuning in. Please like, subscribe, and share. If you would like to support this work, uh, there are links in the description. You can buy me a coffee. You can use PayPal. You can join uh, Dr. Bean's PayPal channel. Uh, you can join Patreon. We actually had a beautiful talk yesterday. So I do for supporters, I do a talk every Thursday at 1 at 1 p.m. and 1 at 6 p.m. We do a Zoom talk. We do not record that. That's just an open discussion where we the supporting beans, I call them super beans, they um, decide a topic and vote on it for one week. And then the next week I prepare it and present that in Zoom. One Thursday we would just do chit chats and just have two sessions of open discussion. So if you want to join in those discussions, either become part of Patreon or Substack or this YouTube channel. With this, thank you very much. Tomorrow is my birthday. And then Thursday I'm leaving for about 20 days for an international travel. So I may or may not be able to do those talks during that time. But till that time, I'll be speaking with you. Stay safe, happy, healthy, and I would see you on Monday. Bye-bye.